All right, now, since we do share most of our builds with you guys, including like a D16 that's for autocross and also the streets, and of course, a B16 that made crazy good power, that's a street car too, and a B20 VTEC, yes, that's been running deep 12s for years, and also a B18C that's over 200 wheel horsepower. We will talk about details, like not necessarily that you gotta spend more, but details that you can do that makes good power and what helps us to make good power and results. We will also share dyno runs of the engine we talked about, the clearances and all that, not one, but two, including this one, this awesome B16 that made good power. So hey, you know, this one is just for you. Let's go. Let's get to the nitty gritty of things. All right, here's the pistons. We're just gonna use it for example, but we'll talk about mainly on the piston rings, the function, of course, a lot of misconception locally in the Philippines, and we'll talk about more details. But if you check around, two years ago, we made this video and speaks about a lot of details that I may miss out right now on this one. So you gotta check that after this. And of course, we also have this for the DIY guys. If you don't have a micrometer and dial board gauge, this is okay to use because we also check this for like checkup and all that. And here, look, we also show talk about equalizing chambers. And yes, you can get the CC equal, but it might not perform well. So we did talk about that on that video. All right. Sorry about the classical music I'm listening to. It's Pachel Bell. All right. Now here's the pistons. This is an ITR JDM pistons. Here's the top ring, obviously, second ring, and then the oil control ring. Okay, I call that oil control ring. All right. Mainly the top ring is, you know, responsible for the compression or the quality of the compression. The second ring, that's mainly a scraper. It scrapes oil down so that the engine doesn't smoke. But maybe 10% of it is meant or it's doing a bit of sealing in case the top ring doesn't seal totally well. It seals a bit, a bit more on the second ring for maybe just 10% of it. And of course, the oil control ring it handles the spreading of oil around the bore, making sure everything is lubricated. And you see there's three holes here on the sides, right? You can see that. Okay, see, when the piston goes up, it's creating a void under it, right? Because there's an area there. So it's kind of having a vacuum or pulling off vacuum. So it's sucking, sucking in oil from this. So not really making it dry, but it'll just suck a bit so that, you know, it doesn't smoke on the compression stage or on the compression cycle, sorry. And so it goes up, right? Now here, as the piston goes down, the same thing, because there's volume beneath the pistons, you, it's trying to push it out, right? So now it's trying to squirt out from the three holes here. So it's spreading out oil around the bore by the oil control rings, hence the term. That's when the second ring has a double of scraping out down the oil, hence the term oil scraper ring, so that it don't smoke. Because if it doesn't, you know, if the second ring is worn out, it's gonna, you know, smoke up a lot. And here's the this is the GDM ITR pistons. All right, yep. Okay, now let's check on this other stuff. Let's go. Let's go. All right, here's the block of freshly honed and brand new piston rings. You can hear that, that's scraping really good, right? But before we get to this, let's go back to the desk and talk about the piston rings. Here, locally, I'm not sure why or where it started, but everyone is like, most chain tree mechanics are built on, you know, making sure the piston rings are tight, especially the top ring. They even go as far as running oversized rings and filing it to fit the standard bore. So it's called filed to fit and whatnot, right? But the thing is, when you do that, this one, the top part, the gap, and the opposite of, of that is the one that's pushing out more or wearing more. But this area here isn't because the gap is letting it close up totally, so, or some more. This way, it's creating a more oval wear, and that's really not good for combustion. That's, you know, I'm pretty sure that's not 
how it's supposed to work because the rings are cut perfectly round or a circle and it's supposed to ride through the bore that's perfectly round. And so when you think about it, if your shade tree mechanic tells you you need oversized rings in stock bore, just run away. Just run away. No need to explain because they, they won't agree with it or they won't understand it to agree with it. But... Of course, that's why there's always uh, oversized pistons, that's OEM, the replacements, and even aftermarket, if you need to go oversized, like on the D-series, then go 75.5 to get the bore perfectly finished for the right piston. And even aftermarket, like for example, even B-series 81, you can go 81.5 or 84, 84.5. Even on the K-series, that's the same thing. Of course, on stock bore, ideally, you can go as much as one millimeter oversized, not more because, you know, you might get the bore th thin. And I hope that's explaining a lot of you guys. And even the guys at Hastings or Total Seal, they said this. Looser won't get you into trouble. Tighter will. That's pertaining to piston rings. And when you think about it, it does perfect sense. Or it does make sense. And here's an older term or older line that my favorite. A little loose and nobody knows. A little tighter and everybody knows. That's because either you scrape it up and blow it up or just smoke or run slow. So everybody will know that. So hey, if you're liking this video, subscribe. This way, you're going to be part of our community and we'll always be here when you check out new stuff that we put out. We're always going to be here. So yep. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like button because it helps the algorithm to gain more activity. So it's going to get spread out to a wider audience. So we'll all be here, right? So yep, let's go. The other thing is that friction, you know, a tighter ring has more friction that so that eats a lot more than a regular or a looser piston ring. So that eats up horsepower. And the way to visualize it better, here, let me show you guys. Let's go back to the engine stand. Let's go, let's go. Okay, visualize with me for a moment here, okay? So let's say the firing sequence of the engine. So let's say piston number one fires up, right? So, okay, so now it goes. And so now, this three are simply passengers. So the more friction they have, the more it eats up of the horsepower that the piston number one does. So we go on. Now, here, piston number three fires. And now this three here is added load, right? So it's eating up horsepower, the potential. And now again, lastly, on the number four, if this fires up, all this three is added weight. So that's actually defeating what you're making. Like for example, it's make your the piston that's firing is actually making horsepower. You point in the head, the manifold, and headers, and all that. But the other three cylinders are added weight, so it eats up horsepower. That's you know not helping. Now let's have a look at the other pistons here. Let's look at this. Let's check the Y Seiko for the K20. As you can see, the oil holes on the oil control ring is a lot bigger, right? Yep, maybe there's a reason for that because this is forged piston, so it needs more help on that. But of course, it does the same job as you know as oil control rings, just like the OEM. And here, this one is my favorite. It's a custom piston that's you know for a project I will once need. It's a custom piston, but eighty one point five for a B eighteen. But look, it's just the top ring and the oil control ring. This minimizes the losses or the frictional loss. So. Hopefully this makes good, good power, but until when I need it, because right now this was just had, you know, made, I had it made through BC Moto and it was just for fun because I just wanted, I like the idea, but you know, hey, there was, there's still no use for it yet. So maybe one day, maybe soon, a 81.5 bore BC-A making maybe tremendous power. Let us see. Okay, so now let's go to the bearing clearances. Here, as you can see here, this is the William bearing bearings. And of course, everyone notices we always shoot for 0 0.0015 on the mains because that's around the middle of the required or the OEM numbers. But of course, you can go looser, but then you may sacrifice oil pressure. But the interesting part there is that, you know, you have to always make sure the main bearings are slightly tighter than the rod bearings. That's because the main bearings get fed oil from the main, I, I mean, the main journals, sorry, get fed oil through the main bearings from the block, right? But to feed the rods, it comes from the main bearings. 
So if you have the mains looser than the rod bearings, it may just lower pressure and may risk, you know, spun rod bearings, right? And here, you can check this, look at this. As mentioned earlier, all gets fed from here, from the mains, from the block to the mains, then it goes to the rod journals here. So of course, you know, if, if it doesn't have enough, if you have too much clearances on the main bearings, it kind of kills pressure. At the same time, it also actually eats up horsepower because you're needing to run a you know, th uh, thicker oil, right? So that's actually load on the oil pump, which actually then creates load on turning the crank. And that's another load carried by the one piston that's running. So because each piston runs on one at a time. So imagine that it's eating up horsepower like that, right? Okay, so now let's go back to the piston rings here. On this one, on Jasper's B20 VTEC that I built in 2016, and it's been racing and being driven since 2018 until now, so that's roughly more than six years. The top ring, the gap is 0 0.018. So when you think about it, OEM is 0 0.008 to 0 0.014 on the top ring. So this is kind of like, you know, people could consider this uh, in my language, maluag or maluag na, but, it runs 12.5. Now this next one, we did this a few months ago. This B16A made crazy good power with just ITR cams. And this, the top ring is 0 0.016. So that's still quite on the loose side, right? But of course, like all blocks, we had it honed and it had brand new piston rings. And hey, it did the good numbers, right? Apparently, the windage loss was not that big because hey, it still made crazy power on the B18 cam. And then here, this one, the same thing, this VTI is a PCP16 with a Z6 head and Crower Stage 3 made over 151 meters horsepower. And the ring gap here, the top ring is also 0 0.016. And this had a generic header. So if imagine if it had a proper good header, this could easily jump 10 more wheel horsepower and be over 160 wheel horsepower on a street car that's on the muffler, full exhaust, crazy. And of course, running new piston rings honing is really important. And of course, if you guys don't have a dial bore gauge and a, you know, micrometer to check on the bore, that is fine. Take it to a machine shop, a full wear, a well equipped machine shop and have it honed for stock bore. And they will tell you if the bore is oval or is, is no longer straight. That's when you reasonably can go to a 0.5 or a next step oversized pistons to ensure your bore is straight and true. This is gonna lead to a good performing engine, be it stock or performance, as long as it's straight and true and honed well, that's gonna be really, really good and performing really, really awesome. So that's gonna be easy for you guys, right? And some may wonder why we share all this good information to the locals. Hey, for me, it's simple. Like if they can go faster, that would be more reason for me to go even faster. So here are the dyno runs. Let's start with the VTI that we did a few months ago. It runs a generic header and a copy or a replica of a spoon and one muffle. Okay, one more, one more run. Okay, it's 151 wheel horsepower. So imagine that with just a generic header. If I had a better header, this would have been like 160 plus, right? Okay, next is the B16. This is my favorite. It had ITR cams and also full exhaust spoon muffler. And 
one more. Yeah, look, 186 wheel horsepower with just ITR cams, OEM. Uh, but look, from 8.5 all the way to 9.5, it's above 185 wheel horsepower. And both of these engines, including the D16 or the VTI earlier, had 0 0.016 loose top ring. It's considered loose locally. They always want it tighter. But hey, look at this. It, has, it had lo less loss, less windage loss, and good power. So if this is something that you like, you can click here for the next video.